Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to everyone joining us this afternoon on the webinar. Uh, what is not warm is the weather out there. It is properly cold. Uh, I don't know about the rest of South Africa, but here in Cape Town, we've, uh, we've had a proper winter storm the last few days. Rain, hail, it's cold. So if you sh see me shivering, understand, it's cold. What is not cold is our guest from a nice warm France. We're welcoming Jean-Yves Kiber from QuickBrain joining us this afternoon. Uh, and we'll learn more from uh, Jean-Yves very soon. Uh, but first, let's uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, our guru and our business. I'm very glad to be assisted this afternoon by Jennifer Van Riet from Silver17. Uh, she's helping us with the coordination of the webinar. Thank you, Jennifer, for the coordination and arrangements and having everything set up very nicely. And uh, I think with that, you can share the uh, presentation uh, so that we can give a little bit of information to our webinar guests. Coming right up. Thank you, Johan. Good. So um, our subject this afternoon is about uh, a computer maintenance management system. Uh, and I will be telling you about how we got to this point uh, and why we have chosen this theme to, to start this, our series of webinars this afternoon. But firstly, just a quick question to everybody. Jennifer, I think we've, uh, we've got a slide there uh, showing uh, the background of, of, um, of the poll. And it's asking that uh, while, while we are doing the webinar, if you can just uh, go to the, the poll session, there is a question that says, have you implemented a computerized maintenance management system? Either having your implementation complete, or is deciding on implementation, or you're evaluating options. You might not uh, have started, you're still using Excel or Microsoft projects or you are using a combination of an ERP and a document management system. And uh, if you're not sure what a CMMS is, well, don't despair. That is what this afternoon is, afternoon is about, is to help you get all of that clarified. So please answer the poll while we are continuing with the, with the discussion. Jennifer, if you can put up the slide of our guru, and just to give everybody a background of, uh, of our business, uh, so Aguru is still a fairly new company, uh, we incorporated in 2017 and we have the mission to improve the collaboration between man and machine and we're going to focus on subjects like uh, sustainability, uh, um, productivity, compliance, safety and probably the most challenging of all is inclusivity. Now our solutions range from strategy uh, but also working with people, so people wellness, people safety. Uh, we, for instance, have a contact tracing solution. Our solutions, uh, and that would be SaaS solutions, software as a service, are around people management, um, asset management, and data management. And when it comes to delivering projects for our clients, uh, we are an aggregator, meaning that we bring ecosystems together we bring the competencies of people in the field of 4R technology so that we can deliver solutions for clients. If you want to find out more, please uh, contact me. We'll be sharing the contact details later on. So one of our objectives uh, is obviously if we want to service the market with asset management is to have uh, solutions and services that we can bring to the market. And for that, we did quite a bit of uh, market intelligence. We did, uh, you know, we, we scouted for the solutions out there. But one of the critical things that was very important to us was that we are not bringing a solution developed by software developers, but that we're bringing solutions to, uh, to our region by people that understands maintenance, understands asset management, and have walked the journey to be able to bring those solutions to the market. So we were very glad to announce our partnership uh, with uh, QuickBrain, uh, with Innovia and um, 
crazy lock back in March this year. And with that, I can uh, welcome Jean-Yves Kiber, the uh, CEO and founder of Innovia and Crazy Lock, to tell us a little bit more about his, uh, his organization. So Jean-Yves, warm welcome to you. Thank you very much for joining us on this uh, very cold afternoon on our side and nice and warm afternoon on your side. Firstly, tell me about your journey with QuickBrain. How, how did it get to, to the point where you decided you're going to be developing a system mm -hmm. and making it available to, to the world? Yeah, thank you first, uh, uh, Johan, for inv inviting me. Um, for for QuickBrain, at the beginning of the story, so 13 years ago, where we had decided to start uh, Innovia, uh, QuickBrain was dedicated to just um, store data and and be a t and at, at, at the beginning of the story, it was designed for just populating CMMS, so maintenance management solution, to help consultants to uh, optimize maintenance plans, per parts lists, and uh, uh, manage all the documentation before integrating all this data into a CMS. But progressively, because in fact, uh, the figure is uh, 80 or more percent of the CMS project deployments failed. Uh, so um, we decided, and we had very positive feedback from end customers, and we decided to go and to develop uh, complementary modules, not only uh, a simple data recorder, but uh, because we had all the information needed for, for the maintenance as a maintenance plan, we decided to add a schedule for, for uh, scheduling uh, uh, functionalities for, for preparing the preventive maintenance and uh, uh, other functionalities for managing spare parts inventory. And and this is how we we've got the first customers and the feedback and and the basic of the software was to have uh, something simple, efficient, and uh, you know who not need to have uh, uh, six months um, uh, to be to be trained on and to to be able to use it. Uh, that 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 was and this is uh, our um, motto: simple and efficient and 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 this is why we had very very positive feedback from the technician on the ground because most of the software or most of the uh, things are not designed for the technicians but the technician is the beginning of the story and this is what we'll uh, discover in a couple of minutes <laughs> during the presentation okay so we you've used the term cmms uh, i think maybe some of our listeners this afternoon might not be familiar with the term uh, Jennifer, if you can put up the slide that we have uh, with all the terms that we might be using this afternoon. Um, and, uh, you know, we're familiar with these, so we might just uh, sneak them in here and there. So I thought I'll put them up on the slide so that everybody's comfortable. But John Eves, can you explain to us what is a computerized maintenance management system? What is a CMMS? Yes, a CMMS is a software designed to um, first manage all the assets uh, build uh, an asset register of your uh, organization, um, then organize the job you have to do for maintaining all the equipments. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, the initial goal of the CMMS was the financial uh, cost management, so the cost management. Uh, and and that, 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 that's the main problem of, the, of this software. But so asset register, organize the job and then follow follow the costs okay and uh, edms where, where where does that come in where, where does the all the electronic documentation come into the building of your of your overall uh, system uh in, in fact quick brain i think is one of the it's quite unique solution because it merged it's a combination of uh, uh, cmms and a documentation management solution so all documents are related to all the equipments on, in a very effective way. And uh, documentation are the, is the, the fuel of the CMMS, is the fuel of the maintenance. This is where the technician has to, uh, to search for any information to, to fix, to repair, to, 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 to train himself. Mm -hmm. So of course, in a, in a new facility or even an established facility, we're not going to we're going to not going to start production or start operation of that facility without having a proper maintenance system in place and critical to doing any operation and maintenance is documentation. 
Yeah. Uh, so the client needs to build up his full record of documentation that serves every component, every unit, uh, mm -hmm. and and the procedures that might be going along with his uh, control system, etc. Um, I think what we can do is to maybe go to the next slide, uh, Jennifer, and then maybe be guided by John Eves as we're going forward. Um, and I think, John, if you want to start by getting a, a quick assessment, uh, maybe just uh, uh, you know putting those questions out there um, for each of our listeners to, to kind of think by themselves, where are they in this process? How do we get going with getting a CMMS implemented? Or if we have the basics of, of a system, Maybe we're using combination of Excel and the ERP system. How do we, how do we take the next step? What, what are those things that I need, we need to ask? Mm. So we've got that slide up, Janice. If, uh... Yeah, OK, OK. Uh, sorry. Yeah, this one. So sorry. <laughs> now, now, I have, now I have the slide. Great. Um, yeah, so um, the same message. It, it, it's just a tool, it's a software. So what is really important during this kind of project is, is first to have a real will uh, of the management to go through this change that will be uh, driven by the CMMS. And uh, of course, to have enough money to go to go and to, to make the process, to make the project a success. Um, then uh, I do you have a, a good knowledge of your of all the equipments you have installed in your plant so does the asset register is complete enough uh, for for the project then the most important it's are the maintenance processes do you know exactly how you, wh how you are actually doing the maintenance uh, for for service request management inventory management quantity maintenance management if uh, if you don't know exactly who is doing what it would be a nightmare to install this kind of solution um kpi so do you have very do, do you know exactly what would you like to measure would you like to uh, uh to challenge okay um with this tool and do you have existing uh key performance indicators and another thing and um i think it's very really, very really important as well is uh, is do you is your team used to uh, uh, manage changes so if you replace um, a pump for example or any, any equipment do you have a process to be sure you have the right spare parts uh, on the storeroom do you do you are you sure that the documentation for this new pump is stored is uh, archived somewhere and uh, allowed uh, and uh, and uh, technician have access to to it uh do you uh, is uh, asset register is updated with the new reference uh new manufacturer of the pump and so on so th this all these things if you have a yes to all this question yes of course you're fully ready to go to the cms if not then you need to th your maturity level is uh, uh is uh, potentially good but you need you need to reinforce some 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 of the uh, mm, some of these topics before starting the project if we could so, go to the yeah so sorry, I think one on. of the essential Please. highlights here is is the buy-in from management uh, this is this is not a subject that we're going to see uh, originating or, or being authorized deep in, in the organization this is really looking at a holistic approach about how our operations will be will be uh, monitored maintained and and uh, you know availability of, of equipment and systems maintained over the life of, of the project. Is that right? Yeah, yes, yes. Management has to, to support, to fully support the, the project. And uh, uh, he has to believe in the project and in the, in the fact that this kind of software could uh, make things going better, increase, increase the reliability, decrease the, the downtime and so on. Okay. Okay, next. Yeah, I think we could go to the next slide. Yeah, so the slide title is Software versus Objectives. Uh, 
you know, it's it's very convenient when we decide to go to uh, such kind of project, and it works with all of the softwares. Uh, the, the main, I think, the common use uh, common habits would be to uh, type on it on the internet, find all the software editors who can propose this kind of software, and go through all the documentation to see what is doing what what software is the best. But to know to know what software is the best is first to know what I want to do with it. You know, it's it's like it's like. Uh, uh, I don't know if you if you want uh, if you if you have six children, you know, a woman and six children, you it's not reasonable to buy a Ferrari uh, because it's not your need. Okay, if you want to have an affair, it's another it's 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 another way. Um, but the first thing is to be is not to be realistic. So the first the first thing is um, regarding the objective. It's not uh, reasonable to want to go you know too high and too fast um, uh, the, the, the software is just a tool so what is really important is to know exactly where you are and where you want to go okay and with and to define different steps and not trying to to start from you know the, um, a, a very low level of maturity and try to go in the, in, in the top in the world class maintenance club uh, in 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 a couple of months, it's not reasonable, and the software will not help you for for doing this. Um, be inclusive. Uh, it's it's very very important that all all the all the all the the organization will fully cooperate in uh, thinking, in uh, deploying, in uh, using the solution, and especially people on the ground, people on the field. So the technicians has to be fully included in the. In, in the in the project, it it's not recommended to to just le left the IT department drive drive the project. Of course, pragmatism is 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 of course important, and uh, if you have if you have uh, um, if you have needs, if you want to be supported, uh, it's it's really it's not it's not an uh, you know it's not a problem to ask for for a support for an external support for guidance um, and and I think it's quite if you don't have a, a, a good experience of deploying such kind of such kind of softwares it's uh, it's recommended to, to to get external support not not not, not because you you don't know and you will not be successful but to to save time I think so that's the more thing and to not spend money to doing again and again to make mistake and to do and to restart the project again and again because you you are you have not chosen the right way at the beginning of, uh, of the story um and be analytics so it's really 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 <laughs> important to define what are your objectives okay and how do you want to measure the improvement that you would like to have with this with this software so that, that that's that's the kind of set of questions that has to be uh, um, cl clearly answered before looking for a software. So what I see from this is what is quite essential is that a, a client will need a management of change process because he's can transition from his existing, let's say it's it's already a facility that's in operations. It's it's not a new site. He's going to transition from a paper-based sort of traditional approach to, to maintenance. He will have combination of spreadsheets. He might have a system that he wants to replace. But what is critical here is that he brings the, you know, the, the manager or the, the executive that's in charge brings the team together through this management of change process. What can go wrong? What, what have you seen if clients try to go too fast, too hard with uh, with with implementing systems. Yeah, if if it's too fast, then um, people on the field will be lost quickly. Uh, they will uh, continue to use what they were previously used, generally Excel spreadsheets. Okay, and they won't, and they will not populate properly. Uh, they are not populating properly um, all the data the CMMS is requiring to uh, fully deliver its its power. I mean, uh, to get good K 
KPI, you need to have good data. So that, that's that's the most thing. And and generally, technicians, be, um, you know, at the beginning of the project, you have very nice presentation of what what the software could do, and the technician uh, are in a kind of dream. <laughs> but when the project starts, it it becomes quickly a nightmare be, because the difference they have be, in what they will what what they was imagining, you, you know, what they were thinking about what had been presented and what they have in in the hand is is very is very different so so it's not good really very really, it's not really good for for the team and it's not good for the productivity at the end so what are the next steps where do we where do we go from here if once we've uh, we've, we've we've got ourselves uh, aligned and agreed and we've got a program how do we go to the next step <laughs> The next step. Well, maybe is that's to, the next uh, slide. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, next next step is uh, yeah. Its title is garbage in garbage out. The next step is to be sure your reference technical technical um, uh, database your reference is clear is uh, is right. Because uh, if you put some wrong data, of course, in the software, it's not a clever software. It will deliver wrong data to the technicians. And if one technician is looking for, a, I don't know, um, a maintenance plan for a pump, or what he has to do on the plant, or uh, if he if he if he has uh, spares available for this pump, if the software tell him, uh, yeah, okay, yes, of course, you have one spare available. I don't know, one the ball bearing is 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 stored is in storeroom number one if he goes if he goes there and could not could not find uh the the bearing okay one time two times but the third time it's finished and he will never use the solution uh or this is just regarding the technician but it could lead to to um, injuries or it could lead to um maybe maybe worst case um if if you if you work with wrong wiring diagrams of course it's not uh, it's not good for for people uh, uh people in the in the in the cabinet so uh the first thing is the asset register uh i i had seen a question about the methodology to build the asset register what is really important for the asset register and it's a long discussion we could have together to find what is the best uh you know breakdown to uh to uh, represent the plant or the facility. It's not really the debate. The debate is, uh, can a, a technician find quickly the information he needs? Th th that's the driver. It's not, it's not uh, do, we, do, we, do we split the facility by, by uh, area, by system, subsystem, or whatever. It's, so it's, it's, is it clear? And uh, does, sorry, do all the tags so all the equipments have a tag. If you have a unique tag on all the equipment, and if these tags are reported into the uh, the breakdown, it's perfect because if you type the tag, you go directly to the asset, and then you can find documentation, maintenance plans, spare part list, and so on, whatever you want. So the, 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 the yeah. Sorry to interrupt it, but in, in the end, what we want is we want the technician to get out in the field to start repair as quick as possible. So it, it's that ease of accessing information uh, to be able to initiate the next step in a workflow. Maybe there's procurement that needs to be done or maybe there's <clears throat> a draw from the store that needs to be taken place or uh, equipment and material need to be delivered at the, at the site location. But that's, mm -hmm. that's what we want to minimize. We want to reduce that time because ultimately that is plant availability that will be compromised. Yeah, and and to 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 be f fast and to um, to fix quickly uh, any issue, uh, you need to 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 speak a common language, and the common language is the tag of the equipment. If you try to explain, hey guys, you know it's the you know it's the red valve close to the to the to the green pump, and nah, it does not work. Um, if you have an issue, it's generally reported by on the on the control room by by an operator, and the operator is just typing, searching the tag where the alarm is uh, is uh, is on, and uh, and then from 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 the tag, you can just write a service request, and then the maintenance team can can start to work and can start to find what what, what is going wrong. 
uh, and uh, and the next step the next point is the documentation once you have written the service requests and you know you have a problem on this pump okay how how does this pump work uh, what are the uh, specificity what 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 are the controls i i need to do or what are the inspection i need to do on it or the diagnostic i i could do on it but it's written this is written on the documentation so this is very very important to get to be sure we have the documentation associated with critical assets i i forgot to to, to talk about uh, the critical uh, assets it's really important to define with different methods, so there's not one method, but uh, could be a FMECA, could be a, uh, uh, an analysis based on on, the, on on experience or on a fault history or whatever. But once you are focused on a set of critical assets, you don't want them to be to fail. Then you could uh, check that you have to check that all the documentation uh, is available for this critical these critical assets. The same for the maintenance plan. Do we have a maintenance plan for these critical assets? And the maintenance plans has to be uh, as much detail as possible. It's not do that every week. It's do that, but how to do that? It could be a link to the documentation, or it could be a service instruction. Spare, for the spare inventory, same, same. Uh, I think I would say same, same procedure. Be sure for all your critical, your critical assets you have uh, all the spare parts available and, uh, the spa and the spares has to be linked to the equipment um, by a bill of materials. So it's just a bill of materials, it's just uh, a link between the equipment and the spare parts explaining how many spares are installed on or how many bearings do I, do I have uh, on the pump, for example. Uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, please. I see there's a question, uh, Jean Neves. Um, you make use of the term a tag. Uh, what, what, what do you mean by a tag? A, a tag, yeah, sorry. A, a tag is a, is a, um, is a functional code. Generally, a tag is uh, on the PNID, is on the, uh, yeah, generally tags coming from, a, from engineering lists. Uh, and it's it's a function function functional code, uh, which will not be modified. If, for example, if you replace a pump for okay, you have a KSB, KSB pump, and you re want to replace the pump by another manufacturer, the function the function will be the same. If it's a feed water pump, then it will still be feed water pump one, and feed feed water pump one has a code. For example, P001. And P01 will not change because I just switch uh, a pump by with another model, but with the same function. It's different from the manufacturer part number. As the, as the manufacturer number for the pump is, you know, what you have on the plates, on the identification mm -hmm. plate. And you could have mm -hmm. a serial number, you could have a, a, a reference to order the same pump. So that, that, that's the difference. So the tag will be the organizational reference to that application versus the the, the the nameplate which would be the product specification from this correct from the yeah supplier. yeah yeah correct yeah functional code yeah. could be unique in the world <laughs> correct correct so you mentioned earlier that the system is not smart uh, you know you need to set up the system correctly to be able to get the functionality uh, out of that but in in this new world where you know we we're creating data we're interrogating data we talk about machine learning and artificial intelli intelligence how do we then move into from reactive maintenance into predictive maintenance yeah um it's it's not it's not a long way but um uh, this is uh, what i've written it's very really important to start first by mastering the reactive maintenance i mean spare parts management and uh the service request process if once it's clear then you can go to preventative maintenance and and once the preventative maintenance is clear then you could you could go to condition-based maintenance. So the difference between condition-based maintenance and the predictive maintenance, um, I would say uh, it's it could be a, a, a marketing difference, or it could be a, a, you know a, a new a new world for for, for an old thing. Uh, but condition-based maintenance is generally is generally uh, 
related to uh, vibration analysis, thermographic, uh, you know, photograph, photographics. Um, it's it's um, how to how to adjust the frequency of the preventative maintenance plan by doing inspections. Could be visual inspections or could be uh, uh, could be driven. Could the condition based maintenance could be driven by the running hours. Could be driven by um, oil analysis, uh, analysis and and things like that. The predictive maintenance is. Uh, is a bit different. We we could uh, we have two kind of families uh, for the predictive maintenance. The first one is uh, for uh, fleet fleet of assets. For example, if you have fleet of uh, cars, uh, planes, uh, trucks, whatever, uh, it's it's all or any any kind of equipment, washing machine, whatever you have. Uh, in this kind, in this kind of um, uh, for for all these uh, for all these assets that are similar, they are, they are, they are quite reliable um, individually. But if you get all the uh, failure history from from all the fleets, then you could identify statistically using deep learning models. You could identify according to uh, the environment. Of, the, of each equipment, you can find some rules. For example, if it's uh, hot, uh, if the uh, moisture uh, moisture content is very very high, if um, I don't know the temperature of the brewing is um, above 30 degrees and so on and so on, then I could have this kind of fault. But to do that, you need to have a, a to, you need to have a, a very very detailed record of the failures and all the environmental data of the equipment itself and plus uh, all the equipment around and plus the uh, um, all, all the data this is why, why we are talking about big data you need to take all the data available for the equipment and on its surrounding area and combine it to the failure history but it's not it's not a, a kind of magic it's uh, just you have identified one failure for example uh, I don't know uh, um, um, if you have to change uh, uh, a part of your car, or whatever it is, and it, it works pretty well. If you have to change a part of your car, a part of your car, an inner part of the car, and this uh, kind of failure uh, uh, occurred a lot of time during, I don't know, a couple of years on the whole fleet of cars. Uh, then you could identify this specific failure, and from this specific failure, you can, uh, get, by gathering the data and analyzing the data, find some um, uh, correlation between the failure and the surrounding data, environment data, and building the rules and then applying the rules. But the predictive maintenance will never uh, uh, predict a failure that 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 has not already uh, came. Okay, it's not it's not intelligent. It's, 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 it's not all clever. about having the data, is is having yeah. the history to analyze to build. You, you need to already problem. have an a failure history to do to do. But painting. we could we could get that from a supplier, for instance. Supplier might have uh, yeah. uh, data models on the history of let's say a bearing performance it on could, a drive shaft or something of the sort. So we can we can include that in into our system. I see yep. a question from uh, Sven and 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 Hichu and Azrudin, which I I think we can combine to. To maybe answer and it goes back to the subject about the definition of a tag yeah. and they ask how do we differentiate between one equipment piece and another um, mm. let's say we've got pump one and pump two uh, and and specific now maybe to quick brain but how do we how do we make the differentiation how do we make use of barcoding or qr coding etc to be able to to make that differentiation and taking it another step further if i now replace the nameplate let's say pump set, um, how do I retain its old history? Because physically yeah. I've, got a, I've got a new item. Maybe it's, if you can just elaborate on that tag management and, and yeah, specific it's a, equipment it's a, identification. It's a, it's a very good question because, because it's a it's, uh, starting point of, of, of a long, of a, of a, of a, a painful, painful discussion and painful consequences. Um, 
in, in most in most of the CMS, uh, the modelization of the equipments are, is really not well done by consultants. The software can do a lot of things, but it's not well modelized. What I what I mean is, um, you first start by the function. The function is pumping water. Okay, it's mm -hmm. P zero zero one pumping water. It's a function. It's um, in uh, I don't know if he, in uh, in Maximo it's uh, okay. it it could be it's it could be modelized differently between SAP between Maximo but but first object is the function. The second object is the asset. The so okay so the asset is the machine itself or or the instrument or whatever it is, and the asset is identified by a serial number and a manufacturer and a reference from the manufacturer okay and from this from and this asset has spare parts so this is the third level and the spare parts is uh, identified by a spare part code to find it in the storeroom a reference from the manufacturer of, of the spare parts uh, and a description the minimum things we need to have but generally that's to get all this from and, and all these three uh, level. Oops, I think we've lost uh, Jean Yves there. I think let's maybe just give a moment to see if we can get him back. Hopefully, we don't have a terminal uh, disconnect with France. Jennifer, maybe if we can, um, yes. uh, while we give so Jean Yves a, a chance to see if he can reconnect. Uh, we yes, can maybe all he work has through. to do is, is refresh, Johan, but it sounds interesting to me. So this tag story, from my point of view, it seems like you have a machine, right? And that machine has spare parts. So the machine has the tag, say, pump 001. But if something breaks within that machine, you still have to call it pump 001 because you have to know where the spare part is going. Am I right? Correct. Correct. So the end of the day is we... We have a function, and, and I always like to simplify things to cars because everybody knows cars. In my car, I know exactly what my car is. I've got a car, my wife's got a car, it's car A and car B. The function is transport for, for the family. If I now have, let's say I have to replace the spark plugs in, in the engine, then the new spark plugs is something that I need to draw from the store for which I would have a reference. Uh, it would be on a catalog, etc. And I would have, and I would be able to build history about the performance of those spark plugs. How long are they lasting for me? I can combine that with other performance information. If I'm driving very fast or I buy inferior fuel, then it will certainly shorten the life uh, expectancy of the spark plugs. But I have to decouple the, my function of having transport for the family to what vehicle is exactly the, the, the vehicle in use and then breaking it down to the specific component. And that combination of history can help me then to, to drive uh, an optimal maintenance strategy that I want to, to drive for my family or take that to, to the industrial environment, to the operations. Mm, I see Jean-Yves Jean back. back. <laughs> Welcome back, Jean-Yves, bienvenue. Um, we were just discussing how the tag would work. And uh, Yuan had, had, had said that it is kind of like having your car. You still have the car, but you have to have your spare parts too. You can't just go buy a spare part for whoever and put it wherever, right? And and have that uh, history yeah. of, of, of the specific uh, performance of, of that component. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm the going to question, put on... Up. The other question okay. I wanted to get back to, and, and we will, uh, before we give uh, Jean-Yves to close off in his last slides, um, is about, and, and, and it kind of stays along the, the theme of, of the tag and the interfacing with the tag, what about mobile? Um, what capability does QuickBrain have to make use of mobile devices to engage with that, that tag, that piece of equipment in the field uh, and giving the maintenance uh, professional access to the required data or initiate a, a process in, in, his, in his workflow? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, well, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I have any. Uh, uh, 
Okay, we try to to explain. So, um, with, with QuickGrain, we are using what we call a PW, PW, PWA application, the technology developed by Google, and uh, it's uh, like if you install an, an application from the web browser. It's a capability if you are on the mobile version of QuickBrain to install it from the web browser on your tablet or on your laptop. So the the principle of of working is you you can you can prepare your job uh, in the office on your laptop and take your laptop right okay and without any connection and continue to work if you can. Or uh, prepare prepare the job with your tablet and go to, and go on site with with the tablet. It's it's fully transparent for, for the technician. And we would obviously make use of a tablet that is appropriate for for the plant environment. So maybe it needs to be ruggedized, or maybe it needs to be intrinsically safe uh, for the operations. But generally, we could start in in a, in a in a non non-risk environment with uh, with a normal tablet or, or even a, a mobile phone is that correct yeah. okay yeah 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 correct some some tablets uh, are designed for explosive area because this has to be uh this yeah defined at the, at the beginning before buying the table of course so we've we've got one last slide here uh um uh, before we go to to the rest of the questions um and you make a bold statement uh you know you say that the system is not going to do the maintenance work for you i thought uh, we computerize our operations now uh w w where does the help come from we still need uh, the humans out in the field <laughs> yeah sorry for the audience but uh, <laughs> the, the, the software is just here to support you and not to do the job automatically because because i've seen in some demonstration looks uh, looks like a, a science fiction movie uh but if you don't have well defined what we explained previously your beautiful tool will not will not really be useful for anybody um what what is important is to get the right functionalities so the functionalities you need and not every buy a software that could do everything uh, is not really a good starting point because um, because it will give a, a lot of complexity to the end user. Is so you know if if it if you want something simple with a lot of functionalities, it does not it does not exist. Uh, yeah, I have. A, High level of latency. Uh, okay, so now, now it looks to be because of the software. Uh, it's not it's not reasonable, of course, to have to, to operate and to manage the CMMS, the three billion three billion brand plant, uh, of course, with a very low cost software. And the opposite is true. Yeah. So put enough money, or do not spend too much money on very luxurious product and that on which you will only use uh, five or ten percent of the offered functionalities and you will spend a lot of time uh, removing the functionalities you you want you would not like to use uh, the consulting and support is really important as well because generally this kind of kind of projects are driven by the IT department and uh, IT uh, engineers, you know, uh, they never went on to a uh, plan or uh, use a rent or any, any kind of tool. So they don't really know what are exactly the needs of the technicians on the field. So th this is why it, it, it's much reasonable to be supported by, by uh, consultants from, from, from the, the um, the sector of the customers done by an IT. So it's important uh, to have that that yeah. relevant experience about uh, the client's operations to understand how the maintenance for 
for that type of facility will operate how the maintenance for the the equipment uh, in use uh, is is appropriately delivered uh, so that you can extract that that value for the client as best possible mm. yeah and oh, simplicity oh. is is the key to it all yeah yeah correct it's 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 very important to to know what is the technician what what is the what daily uh, the task he has to do what what are his pain points um it's 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 really clear it's very, very important uh to 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 be to 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 have a to have a feel experience yeah to have a feel experience. Mm -hmm. uh it's the same the same thing for the training uh if you start you know uh, in in a beautiful classroom with slide one on uh, 200 slides, you will very quickly lose uh, most of the audience. Some of the technicians are really in the uh, in the, in the hard reality of, of the field. Uh, they they you know is they not really interested by having uh, courses for. During, during days explaining if you click on the red button then that will display as uh, the green window they don't they don't care what they want is when i am on the control room when i am on the store room when i am on the plant what do i have what can i do what should i do where should i type how to create a service request how to see if the spares are available how, how to but but on on a real example and, and on real situation this is this is why the face to face experience is the best one uh, go on site with the technician and explain during all the day how to do things with with him but but with the technician on in front of the software okay and not just Sit, sit on the on the chair in the class in the classroom. So to to summarize that, in the end, the technician's job is to go and do the maintenance to ensure that the plant uh, or, or the, the piece of equipment goes back online. He uh, it, it, it doesn't want to be interfered by the system. The system must work for him. He mustn't work for the system. Uh, he need to be able to get in there. He needs to get the information that he required quickly. Uh, it needs to be set up uh, simple, e efficient for him uh, so that he can get to his real job as quick as possible. And once we yeah. get that balance right of having information, um, structuring it properly, uh, planning, uh, obviously preventative maintenance activities, uh, extracting information, what we can do from pr predictive work, but all of that ultimately must come together for that technician to get into the field as quick mm -hmm. as possible at the right time to, to be able to deliver his, his his ultimate work, which is which is the maintenance Correct. or the replacement or etc. the work that he's doing. We, we, we're going a little bit more over time and we, we thank everybody for uh, for staying on participating. Uh, Jennifer, if you can maybe guide us just from the top some of the questions I've I've noticed uh, uh, one or two along the way and, and I'm sure I've I've missed a couple as my as my focus was here. I think one uh, that uh, that was early on, uh, Johnny. If, if you can help us to, uh, what's the difference between a, a CMMS, computerized maintenance management system, and a CAF, a computer aided facilities management system? Hmm. Um, gener generally, facilities management solution have less functionalities than uh, CMMS. They are mostly designed for uh, building, building management, uh, and uh, and in the situation of you you have service contract, okay, no people no people on site, and then you can you can you can call if you have to change a light bulb, if you have from in the toilet, then you have you have a society a company dedicated to to do that, and you can. And you can write service request and manage the, um, the operation to be sure everything is properly done, and then manage the invoicing and so on. For the CMMS, 
situation is generally different. You have a maintenance team. You have you can have several plants or very huge, very large plants with thousands or tens of thousands of it. And uh, the software is designed to properly manage both technical data and the job of of the main of the maintenance team of the maintenance team. Uh, it is maintenance. Uh, solutions are less, less focused on the asset itself. It's most focused on the on the management of the service itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So question, another question yeah. that's no, another question that has bearing on this one, Yuan, is and how is the CMS system differ? How does it differ from Maximo and SAP? So of course, Maximo uh, is 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 a is a system that uh, QuickBrain interfaces very well, and it's uh, you know you have models integrating there. It's SAP is an ERP system. So how do we bring the two together? Hmm. Generally, we we can start by QuickBrain. It's designed for low level maturity organization maintenance. It's not recommended to start by Maximo. We, we are partner of, of IBM. For, for the maximum product. And I mean, uh, if you, you you can start very quickly and easily by quick brain and then transfer everything to SAP or to Maximo when you have reached the right level of maturity. Okay, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So if we have a, a, a kind of a, a progression project in a large facility or if we have a smaller facility then ideally we would start with uh, with quick brain uh, but if we have an established system we can also integrate with uh, with maximum and, and, and certain elements of, of SAP as we need it uh, mm, so we're okay. not we're yeah. not delinked from from those systems uh, but yeah, ideally we would be the core for from quick brain can be interfaced very easily with SAP maximo in in for aim or AQL AIM. Okay. Mm, mm. So thank so you, Ezra the question, Dean, for that question. Yes, so the next question will has bearing. It's from Hugo, and Hugo says, the system is only as good as the configuration. Does Agura and Inovia follow specific processes to define and configure the asset structure for the customers? I think uh, um, Janiv's answered that when he, when he said it, it, it's yeah. about the technician. It's right, about so his, is the EDM in completely paperless and if so what infrastructure is required to support the operation like x ex rated tablets for artisans performing inspections in hazardous areas etc we quickly touched on that but maybe we just a quick elaboration on that aspect uh, jean yves about uh, the infrastructure and equipment to deploy quick brain mm. uh, quick quick brain is a cloud-based uh, uh, solution could be hosted in the in the country or of course of the customer. Uh, so it's very easy to deploy. It's just just a, a connection with a with a secure secure URL. You you can can type and connect to to QuickBrain. No in, in installation required on the desktop. Um, but it's, uh, it's very very simple to deploy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question will then be, um, an asset will be, uh, an asset will have it, oh sorry, let me ask this question first from Sven. Is the app web-based or and .apk? And we, it could be installed locally on your servers, of course. Okay, so it can be installed locally. So um, the one last question that I have here from Yuan is that an asset will have a unique ID number which will stay from the, with the asset from the cradle to grave, rotable space that can be used in numerous locations in a plant. Location number will identify location in plant and its functional operation and tag will typically refer to P and ID. So uh, he just wanted to check whether that is correct or not, whether he understands that. I think it takes us back to the question about what is the what is the specific of the tag and mm -hmm. we've, we've decoupled from the function to the tag to the specific item which would be a barcoded reference to to that uh, that component or, or unit etc mm. and that is that is all differentiated in the system 
Mm. Yeah, it's it's very very, very well differentiated. Yeah, both, mm. both of them. Okay, so the, if a plant the, is is sorry, just to you close off on that point, uh, Jennifer. Um, if we think it as as process design, uh, mm -hmm. unless we have a, a management of change process that there's a cause to change in the process, the process mm -hmm. function will remain. I will always have a pump that fills a tank. Argument's sake, the pump is the pump is the item in question. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a redundancy approach to that pump application. It can be pump A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have that pump A, B, and C until I have a process design change. But when pump A fails and I need to replace that pump, physically becomes a new pump. So I need to have still for, let's say it's pump 100A. I still have a pump 100A and I will have a new pump 100A and therefore I need to be able to differentiate between the history of the previous pump 100A and of course now my new pump 100A for which I need to build a new book of, of, of history. What is his running yeah. time? What is the component yeah. performance? Yeah. And all of the, yeah. those things. So that differentiate is, is, differentiation is very important and necessary in the system so that we can build that data program over time that we can do analysis and move from reactive to predictive maintenance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Hugo asked a question that also has bearing on this. He said, if a plant is 20 years old without tags, documentation is not properly maintained and maintenance strategy is not reviewed, is it important to correct all of this before the platform can be deployed? How can deployment be started and scaled up? Mm. I mean, it's not a question of uh, quick brain, uh, but uh, all the software of the database needs some unique ID to find the information. Uh, we were involved in projects in very, very, in very old plans. Uh, effectively, it's it's could be could be complicated, but we strongly recommend at 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 the minimum. Thing, is to put a tag on the equipment. That, that, that's the key. And without that, it's not, it's not really reasonable to start a CMMS project. Mm. Mm. OK, so. I guess so if, if, I can, if I can add that, I think it is one of our, our closing points. Uh, in, in the end, uh, ideally, we would like to have a, a plant perfectly configured, but the reality is that usually is not the case. Even even a new plant is in some level of progression. Uh, yeah. There might be some design change taking place, or there could be a change in management philosophy or maintenance philosophy, etc. So I think what is all important there, and, I, and it goes full circle to some of the earlier points that Jean-Yves highlighted, is that organization need to start somewhere. Um, to try to take the big leap uh, if, your, if your current is, uh, operations are not fully digitized or doesn't have all those processes in place, uh, trying to do it all at once is going to be difficult. Uh, you're going to need a number of resources and it will take some time. Ideally, you want to break down that, that process, uh, work with a consultant that can strategize what is the, what is the, the, sort of the, the sequence of events that you need to take place. Yes, you will have to address the tagging of your equipment. Uh, you want to be able to see how you link from your process control operations to your maintenance uh, operations so that everybody speaks the same language. Mm. As we take those steps, we can use, we can say start in a plant unit, er, plant unit or you can start an area. Uh, but ideally, we want to look at what is the value for the customer. You know, we want to do maintenance where he has a problem. Uh, we maybe has an issue with uh, plant availability or repetitive failures. So we're going to have to do a bit of a cost-benefit analysis when we make that assessment of how do we transition from the non-digital space to the fully digitalized space. Uh, and as uh, Johnny has highlighted, that, that's the role of the consultant, just to be able to come and help uh, with, that, uh, with that process for the client, make that transition. Uh, you know, affect the training, uh, getting the, the comfort with the system, because ultimately that value is going to go to the client, what he can extract from the system, how he can build data mm -hmm. over time. So it's a progressive process, uh, and certainly one that lends itself to extracting quite a bit of value. Mm, fantastic. I think Unfortunately, we've, we've reached questions. the end of our... Yes, we've covered most of them, except for the attendance certification. Do you know if you'll, there will be any attendance certifications here? 
Have you decided whether to issue, give people? We can we can issue an attendance certificate participation. Um, so our group will be issuing that uh, certificate for everybody uh, that attended today. Uh, if you could just indicate if you would uh, require that um, um, that attendance certificate um, either in the polls or by sending uh, us an email, uh, we would uh, be happy to prepare that for you and return that so that you can go on to your HR records uh, within your organization. Excellent. So, Joanna, I'm seeing that the survey link is not working. Would you mind sending it again, um, perhaps to the attendance afterwards uh, when we send out sure. that email? Right, well, so we'll it. I will have to look into to why it wasn't wasn't working. Um, I wonder if it if it's not past its expiry date. So that, that 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 would be my 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 mistake. Uh, oh, it these should be things back happen. Up, uh, these things it should happen. be back up this afternoon. But please let us know if uh, if you haven't got it. Uh, uh, and uh, thank you very much for everyone's participation. I see some are starting to to log <laughs> off. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, it's cold, get the fireplaces on, get the wine out, uh, and enjoy the time with the family. Those that might still be at work, uh, wherever you are around the world, thank you for everybody that has dialed in. We have all have different uh, arrangements around lockdown, so if you're traveling, travel safely. Uh, but certainly, uh, all the best for everybody. John Eves, thank you very much for uh, spending your afternoon with us and sharing yes, your valuable thanks. insights you. very much appreciate sorry, it sorry for my english, my english and, uh, <laughs> yeah no we'll we'll i'm, I'm sure if there's thank a question much, afterwards we we can translate and of course mm -hmm. jennifer to you thank you very much for all the coordination mm -hmm. i believe we will have a recording put out and uh, we will be sharing the links with the participants as well absolutely thank you so much for using uh, silver 17 John Eves, Johan, thank you. Have a good afternoon. And uh, I hope we see you all again very soon. Thank you for participating, audience. It was fabulous meeting all of you. And have a good week. There's more webinars coming, so uh, please, oh, yes. please look out for our, for our adverts. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And follow us. <laughs> and on LinkedIn, we're also on LinkedIn, so connect with us all. And we'll Correct. keep you up to date. Correct. Keep, okay. Keep have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Ciao. All the best. Ciao, ciao. Bye. See you next time.